I'm a lawyer. I used to work for the government in Sweden for about eight years. In Sweden, we have basically two major laws that govern these types of illegal practices. The main one is the Swedish Penal Code, or the Brotsbalken, andra tred och fjärde kapitlet. And the second one is uh, the organ and tissue removal laws, which is um, transplantationslagen och lag om genetisk integritet. So these are <clears throat> actually these, this, these two Swedish laws, transplantationslagen och lagen om genetisk integritet. They work together. The transplantation law came first in 1995, and then. Uh, through an effort from the EU, uh, this law was sharpened and some of the provisions were moved into Logan on Unitas Integritate. And to sum it up, um, what this law says for Sweden is that anyone who for profit, um, I'll, I'll read it in Swedish so, so you can understand what the Swedish law says. Den som för vinstsyfte tar, överlämnar, tar emot eller förmedlar biologiskt material, det vill säga organ, från levande eller avliden människa. Den personen döms till böter eller fängelse i två år. Um, so this um, legislation came from an initiative from the EU. So obviously this is very good. And the Italians have a similar law that uh, they made in 1999 that have similar penalties, a bit stricter penalties, but similar prisons and fines. <clears throat> but what happened in Italy now is, I believe you touched upon this law from um, the doctor. He was one of the initiative takers, yes. So they made an actual, a new crime in their penal code, which is, uh, makes it illegal uh, in any way to do this practice. That is, to, to take organs and trade with them or use them for any purpose. And they made, um, the penalties were prison three to 12 years and a fine of 50,000 up to 300,000 euros. So they made a clear distinction and a tougher set of penalties for these types of crimes. Now, if you look at Sweden, then, um, of course, it's good that we have this transplantation law uh, that says it's illegal that uh, for profit to take organs and to, you know, use them for. But this law only targets uh, people who would do it for profit or health professionals who would do it in any way uh, to perform transplants. What we don't have is a section of the penal code, Botsbalken, that says that this practice would be illegal for anyone. And this is you know, the, the main reason why I'm up here today. Um, because I think, when I, when I was um, making the, the um, the review of these laws and looking at the Italian um, set of uh, new um, regulations. Having done some legislative work in the past, I worked with environmental stuff and we had some, uh, yeah, some work with the, the government to make some new, uh, improve the environmental laws. Uh, it's actually a little bit surprising that this the law about genetic integrity doesn't target the fact that anyone would travel to China and have this uh, type of surgery performed. Um, it's basically like saying it's, it's illegal to uh, produce drugs, it's illegal to sell them, but it's illegal to use them to make a comparison. Why? didn't they go all the way and create something within the Swedish penal code? Now I know that this type of legislative work is you know, difficult and takes time, but I would say for Sweden, where we are now, it is a, 
uh, us making a stand against these like horrific things that Harold just talked about and that we saw on the video. Yeah, I believe that covers the the basics of the legal. Obviously, there are more things to cons uh, consider when you actually make new legislation, but that's a general idea.